want to promote or something, you know? Um, can I pray real quick? Yes, please. So, uh, Lord Jesus, I uh, ask for your presence, your Holy Spirit to guide us. Thank you for the privilege of uh, getting to meet my brother Finney in person and just to talk about uh, what it's like to plant a church in the hood, what it's like to, to, to go through some of the struggles, the victories, uh, but ultimately just to serve you and to have the privilege of co-laboring with you, the creator of all things, um, and, and, and just exchange experiences and get to know each other, Lord. Uh, we pray that people would be encouraged by the small platform, that we would use it to give you the glory, uh, and ultimately that's about you and not us, um, but that you may uh, be exalted above all things. Uh, in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. So... Um, it's going to be on, it's on Facebook Live right now already I might think so if you want to go and see what people are saying feel free to do so but don't feel like you have to okay um, I'm about to open it up yeah and I tagged you on it so you're on there already yeah I got to clear it first okay yeah I'm, I'm new to I've only had Facebook for a couple months now so yes. Oh, yes. so yeah I have to, I think I gotta okay you doing it. Okay. You attack you in the post. Hey, Christina. Let, let me know when you're ready and we'll go ahead and get going. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, I'm going to count down, then I'll kick it off, and then just jump in. Okay. Three, two, one, and welcome to another episode of the Hood Grace Podcast. I am Pastor Rudy Rubio, uh, one of the pastors at the Reformed Church of Los Angeles, and I always say like this, in the city of Linwood, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and we're I, up to good. Yeah, and I and I got a I got a I got a friend, a new friend of mine, uh, brother uh, of the faith, co laborer in the kingdom, uh, Pastor Lee Finney of the Junction, uh, a church here in Linwood. Uh, so I'm really grateful for. And I've been seeing you on social media. Like I'm like, oh, this dude, like he he he's just like me. He's just black. You know what I mean? I, I'm like the Mexican version of him. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, and I was like, you know, we've had a bunch of interactions on social media, and I was like. Man, I got to reach out to this dude and, and see how we can connect. Like, we're both in the same city. You know, I connected with Pastor Nissan Stewart of, of Greater Emmanuel Temple. And, and I want to partner with the people that have already been here before us, mm-hmm. doing great work like y'all are. And, and how can we come alongside you and partner and, and spur each other on towards love and good deeds and, and just take over the city for the Lord, you know? Yeah. Uh, but if you'd be kind enough as to just introduce yourself and tell us who you are, where you're coming from, and, and, and all that, so people get to know you, including myself, that'd be, that'd be great. Um... I'm Lee Finney. I'm born and watched, raised in Linwood. Um, went to Mark Twain, Hostler, and Linwood High School, the real Linwood. <laughs> on, um, not the bootleg one. Nah, not, not the, the nice real, one. <laughs> not the nice one. Went to the real Linwood, where it was still a little gutter over there. Yeah. I'm just a product of the city. Um, Linwood has always been a safe haven for me. Um, been pastoring now for almost nine years. Um, moved the church from Compton to Linwood intentionally, um, just to bring it a little bit closer yeah. to. Um, my connection and roots between Linwood and Watts. Um, I'm called to serve all three communities, but Linwood has been. I like the I like the phrase. Sorry for cutting you off. Yeah. I like the phrase you used this morning. What did you call it? like the Tri City? Yeah, the Tri City blessing. <laughs> yeah, Linwood, Compton, Watts is all the same. You can't. No one in Compton can say they haven't done some type of business, be it good or bad, in Linwood and Watts, <laughs> or and Watts, vice right? versa. Yeah, they're all they all go together. Yeah. So yeah, um, I know. I guess. The location where I'm called to be, mm-hmm. so I'm comfortable with it, and I'm just trying to move in it and pursue it with all I got. Cool. So, how, how long have you been pastoring now? Um, almost nine years. Almost nine wow. years. I took over the church um, as the, I guess, lay pastor, or interim pastor at the end of 2010. Mm-hmm. Going in 2010. Wait, interim 2010. Yeah, I it's got 2018 it. now. I mean, <laughs> so it's a long interim, right? <laughs> no, I mean I got there. I got sent over there 2010. Okay, okay. 2010, um, and was the interim pastor for a couple months and got installed maybe a year later. But okay. By the second or third month, I knew it was home. It was a matter of the logistics and trying to yeah. honor the legacy yeah. and other people. So. So when you first when you first took over the church, you were telling me it was actually 
right across the street in Compton, like technically right across the street, yeah, right? Right, 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 right cat a corner next to the tacos of Unico. So where we're at right now, this is like literally the last street in Linwood. Yeah. Because as soon as you cross the street right there, this it's is Compton. Compton now. Yeah, I was one block away from Linwood, <laughs> literally. I can throw a football from yeah. where we're podcasting at to yeah. the church. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So how long were you there? We were there two years. Two years. There two years. And and if you if you wouldn't mind sharing with, with with the people what you were talking to me about like some of the experiences like 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 <laughs> on like, this side of town on this side of town yeah when yeah, we yeah. first got to church first got over there we were having a Bible study I pastor a young group of people uh-huh. people who call millennials okay um, that look a little ethnic look a little urban I had my cousin was a member at the time <laughs> and he was hanging out before Bible study uh-huh. right on Atlantic and he got pressed by somebody from the hood yeah. Uh, because of I'm from the city, I was able to make a phone call to a shot caller and tell him, you know, Finney over here now, can yeah. you leave my people alone? Because we love yeah. God, but we'll get with it. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah, being yeah. honest. So yeah. between that and the tagging, we had one little tagging incident on the building, but just because I'm kind of connected to Linwood, I haven't had any real gang-related or hood-related issues mm-hmm. in the city with me or anybody connected to me. That wasn't able to be resolved before it turned into something. Yes, yes. Because yes, then yes. when you move to the other side of Linwood, like down by Atlantic and yeah. LK, then it was that so, was another hood. Yeah, yeah another thing. hood. <laughs> Same, similar thing happened yeah. where they was hitting up on the building, and I just had to make a phone call. I, I'm not no tough guy. I'm not a thug. Um, got a little, a lot of hood in me, but I'm yeah. not a thug. Yeah. So I have access to thugs. So yeah. I can just make phone calls. And it's not, once again, because I'm a tough guy. It's just a grace that God has given me to have connections to people who are, are actively tougher than I. Yeah. It's pretty good. Hey, you got your hood Rolodex? Yeah. Let's go down the end hood. Let's go, to, let's go across that land. Like, yeah, let's go to Pompano. Who do we go? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah all, all three of them. Yeah. I even, yeah. Anyways. And, and I didn't even know that you and I had a connection. Yes. Right? You, you were sharing me that one of my little homies... Yeah, you know that, that 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 I can still say little homie. Yeah, <laughs> that 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 he he's how kind of we're connected like outside of that. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I play uh, semi pro football with one of your little homies. He approached me he was like, "Hey, man, you know Rubio, man? That's my man. He was my big big homie." And then he uh, yeah. got into some stories and basically told me that you were a real one. You really have a testimony and yeah. you really have overcome the hood yeah. and the streets and the culture. Yeah, and. The fact that you're just a real one, and he admi- I mean, admires what you're doing to the point to where he looks at me differently, simply because I'm connected to you, because yeah. we're believers, we're called, um, but we don't act like regular church folk. Yeah. We're not traditional. Yeah. I, I wear a collar uh, maybe four times a year because of the de- denomination or fellowship affiliation, but... I'm in jeans, t-shirts, and jays. You mean a collar? Like yeah, a clear collar, collar. Clear collar? Yeah, I'm not walking around like a Catholic priest every day. So <laughs> I ain't never wore one. <laughs> so I, I don't think I'm going to have to wear one ever again. I, 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 I don't. Yeah, my, my boy, my co-pastor, Chris Marquez, he's a big old SA yeah. too, you know. And we were going to first plant the church. He was like, yeah, so I think we should wear vestments. And I was like... Yeah, let me know how that works out, homie. Yeah. Like, I ain't worried no yeah. business, you know. I'm, I'm, the, I'm like, the plant pastor. I'm we ain't cool, doing bro. that. I'm cool. Like I, I've only, I've only, I've only worn like long sleeves or sweaters like when it's cold. Yes, yeah. I'll preach like this: long sleeve, yeah. short sleeve shirt. You know, I, I don't wear jeans just because I don't feel comfortable wearing yeah. jeans because my my physique doesn't. I don't think <laughs> blends well with jeans. <laughs> you know, I still wear. I still, you know, I still rock the the, the well, cuffs with the with the with yeah. the pleats on some doctors, but um. But if I could, I would. Well, it was a transition for me. I was that guy who wore the three-piece suits, the alligators, the cufflinks. The, I was trying to fit in. Um, <laughs> I so can't picture you like that, I bro. tried to fit in. Like <laughs> I have friends that talk about me now. They're like, you've changed. I'm like, yeah. I've just grown. Yeah. Grown to be comfortable with me yeah. and not trying to assimilate um, be somebody else. fashion or culture. I'm just comfortable with being me. And... Um, be what I'm called to be, and that's catered yeah. to my congregation. My congregation aren't corporate American people. Amen. So what do yeah. I look like wearing three-piece suit to a person who yeah. maybe could afford it? or It's just, just not them. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I've learned to be comfortable in it. It still offends some people, but... You know, in Rome, do as the Romans do. So, like, I go to a church and put on a suit. I got them. Yeah, yeah, for I still sure. wear them. But well, I mean, Paul says, "Be all things to all people," right? Yeah, you to know, save some. Yeah. So, <laughs> no, but the yeah. save some part for me personally, that's been my biggest challenge and the thing that's made me take my life and ministry to the next level. Yeah. We're called to save 
you know, some. Mm-hmm. But we don't choose the some. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, but we got to be the same to everybody. Yeah, because we don't know who those some are, right? Yeah, so yeah. we would love, I would love to have my whole family at the church. I would yeah. love to have all my friends and big yeah. homies, little homies. But I got to be faithful over whoever God has sent to accept me for who I am. Amen. Because yeah. we want our family there, but do you really want to deal with the judgment and the ridicule yeah. and the whole family? Yeah. Going from Lee Lee to Prophet Finney. Yeah. Or Lee Lee to Pastor Finney. Yeah. So I just trust God with his people and whosoever will let him come. Yeah. And, and that's that's kind of like, like a soft spot for me because um, so Mexicans, most of us, we come from like diehard Roman Catholic backgrounds. Mm-hmm. And it's like, how dare you leave? It's like, if you leave Catholicism, like you have abandon your family you have turned your back on mm-hmm. them and and like like how dare you that would be like going from this side of Linwood to that side of Linwood yeah. you know what I mean yeah, yeah, like, yeah. it's like that that's how bad it could be and I pretty much I pretty much got like disinherited by my family not, not that they had any money to give me but I mean just yeah. like 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 cut ties you know when I became when I became a believer um and I I never really understood why I was like I would get frustrated when I like you knew me at my worst like the stories that Louie told you like I don't know what he told you but yeah. like I was horrible, Finn. Yeah. You know what I mean? So when when my life changed, it's like it wasn't me. Mm-hmm. It was not my 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 my, my uh, mm-hmm. immense willpower. I didn't ask for this. Yeah, like, like for me. God God removed like the addiction to dope and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But I still can't walk by a chocolate chip cookie without sticking it in my mouth. So it's yeah. not willpower. Yeah, it, it's got to be something much it's greater than that. So I wanted them to to like I wanted like shove it down their throat. And, and realized that I couldn't, my, and my, my pastor, who now just happens to be the head of our denomination, he had told me, um, he was, I see you stressed out and frustrated. I tried sharing with him, like, why won't these people get it? He goes, you know what? I came across a very valuable lesson in ministry where he goes, it's really simple. You walk with those that want to be walked, and those that don't, you just bless them and keep pushing. Mm-hmm. Like, like, you can't force these people, you know? Yeah. Um, so when, 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 when my family just kind of like cut ties with me for the most part, it was hurtful. And then I started reading stuff in the Gospels, like where Jesus said, I didn't come to bring peace. Mm-hmm. I brought a sword to cause division, you know, where where mothers and daughters-in-laws and families mm-hmm. will be split. And I was like, yo, it started making sense. Yeah. And it's like, we just don't know who those some, who those chosen are. Like, yeah. like, we just don't know. I wish everybody could just walk around with a dumb sign in the back so yeah. I know who to focus on. Who's going to be loyal, who's going to be faithful, right? or who's just coming to use you for a moment. Yeah, but man. That, that's the blessing of it. But from a family perspective... It's taken me probably six going into the seventh year before my family became receptive. Wow. To me being the preacher, prophet, pastor, leader, family, patriarch, even though I'm not the oldest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still have uncles. I still have a father. Yeah. But God has blessed me to kind of be the spiritual shot caller in a very large family. I have on my mom's side about 200 and something cousins. Wow. Um, I think y'all got his beat, bro. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, yeah, yeah. So, um, it's a blessing and a burden because, you know, you don't want to dishonor what God has given you. Exactly, yeah. And I came from a family church Uh that didn't, I guess, we live, so I don't, that didn't treat. (laughs) And we ain't editing nothing, bro. That didn't treat outsiders, or at least me. They didn't treat me Uh how I thought I should have been treated. So when I inherited the church, I shunned my family for the first five years, trying Mm -hmm. to love on these people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But people going to come and people going to go. And family started trickling in. And then I had my marital transition. And it was like, the one thing that I didn't want is what I have now. Yeah. Family church. Mm -hmm. Um, that's welcome to everybody and treats nobody different, but I'm a writer's right and Romer's wrong guy. Yeah. So even my family don't get preferential treatment at church. Yeah. I'm not that I've never been that guy. Yeah. And, and, and I think that, that that's very wise yeah. on your part, because if the congregation or, or anybody for that matter yeah. sees that you're treating somebody different, that there's some kind of favoritism, yeah. like it's all bad. Yeah. You get division, you start clicks. Um, some pastors like to know exactly who's given and how much they're given. Mm-hmm. Some pastors don't because yeah. they feel that if they do, treat them even if they yeah, exactly, even if they don't want to, like subconsciously, they will treat the biggest givers differently. Yeah. Well, some you know? you've been trained, uh-huh. seminary trained. They teach you to treat them different now mm-hmm. in school now. Yeah, I, I I don't I don't agree with that. Yeah, I don't either. I, I don't agree with that. Um, I, I, I want to be able to... I'm a kind of pastor. I want to meet with everybody. Yeah. Like, if any of our church is watching, like, please invite me over for dinner. Please invite me for coffee. Yeah, we're going to eat. <laughs> you we're going to drink. We're going to be married. Because that's where you fellowship. People yeah. bring down the walls. There's 
there there's more transparency and genuine yeah. and they let you they let you like really look into their lives and, and when people are being genuine you get to know them you know where their strengths are where their weaknesses are how to pray for them and how to just come alongside them and encourage them and where to hold them accountable yeah and i think that's the big transition with ministry in today's society, I think it's gonna be more about community, mm -hmm. more about family, more about relationship. You know, people don't like it, but the mega church is dying. Yeah. You're gonna have those anomalies mm -hmm. still, but the common average 50 to 75 hundred member church, the relational church is gonna be more active and more prevalent in today because they need the real connection yeah. outside of whatever you've given them for that hour and a half on Sunday morning. Cause Wait, your church is only an hour and a half? Hour and 45 minutes on first Sunday? That's not that's not orthodox for a black church. It, it, or a Hispanic church for that matter, right? Well, Hispanic, y'all had church. Y'all <laughs> y'all had, I, I love um, Hispanic Christians. They are so, well, Mexicans are just passionate people. <laughs> but for them to love God and have a Holy Ghost, it yeah. takes that natural passion yeah. to a whole nother level. I've been in Hispanic churches and if had some of my greatest moments in God in a Spanish speaking wow. Hispanic church. Uh, like okay. the passion, like I think the black church can learn from the sin sincerity uh -huh. um, in the Hispanic church. Y'all just love God. Mm -hmm. Like nobody's arrived yet. Y'all still finding your way in life, yet y'all give God everything without any excuses. Amen. So it's a blessing I think the black church can really learn from. Thank you. That's that's honor, honorable for, for, for a Latino to hear a, a black person say that about yeah. us because, mm -hmm. bro, like, I, I think the church as a whole, like, envies the, the, the black yeah. church, you know, for the way they worship yeah. and for the way, like, we can all learn from yeah, each other. Yeah, it's give and know? take. It's give and take. I've been, I've had partnerships with Hispanic churches and um, the church was a, a Spanish-speaking church, second generation, uh -huh. uh, English speakers. Okay. So all of the younger people would be infatuated with our praise and worship. Uh -huh. like, okay. I hear you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, you see the kids hanging out like, oh, they about to start. They about yeah, to start. Yeah, yeah. So we can learn and grow from each other. I don't think no race, culture, or creed has cornered the market on how to do church, especially how church is changing. Yeah. I went to a church, or I was raised as a person who went to 8 o'clock service, Sunday school, ate donuts, 11 o'clock service would end at about 2 o'clock, eat chicken for a 3 to 3.30 service, and then maybe have a 6 o'clock service. If I try to do that now, yeah. and I'm a church boy, yeah. believe it or not, I'm a church boy. <laughs> um, I, would, I can have church all day, but today's people, especially yeah. in Southern California, you go over two hours, even with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Even with an altar call, healing, and deliverance. Yeah. They looking at they they scroll on their timeline like they got to get to the next yeah. event. So, yeah. um, I've tried to. I call myself a, a minimalist pastor. Okay. I reduce all of the non essentials or important yeah, things, yeah, like announcements, extra songs. Just you know, we we don't have a deacon board, so there's no devotion, no yeah. devotion. Okay. So that, that's 30 minutes gone. Okay. Having the deacons put us to sleep. No disrespect. <laughs> you know, you know, yeah. Yeah, I grew up in a church where we had deacons that couldn't sing, and they'll be up there 30, 45 minutes oh, wow. trying to take us there and then have welcome, uh -huh. then have announcements, then have altar call, then an A and B selection, uh -huh. then an offering, then the pastoral announcements, then a sermonic solo, then church, then another altar call, then another offering, and nobody's lives would change. <laughs> like you had great fraternizing, no real fellowship, yeah, yeah. no real deliverance, yeah. no real life-changing moments. Mm -hmm. And I thank God for my upbringing, but I know that there's more to God and to church and how we do it yeah. and to basically minimize it from our context to a worship and a word. Go. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I hear what you're saying and I, I'm kind of like that too because Latino churches, you know, growing up and in, in like we're the, the, the typical Mexican, Latino, Spanish speaking mm -hmm. Christian church is usually like Baptocostal. Yeah. Right. You know, um, and, 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 um, there's a lot of passion, a lot of energy, a lot of all that stuff. Now, I think I take the best of that world, mm -hmm. and then I'm taking the best of the academic world yeah. and, and trying to fuse them together because I think in my culture, there's a lot of passion, there's a lot of zeal, but not much theological yeah. understanding or conviction. That's, you know? 
So like church too. Yeah. So I'm I'm not speaking on anything yeah. on anybody yeah. other than I'm talking about what I know. Yeah. I understand. So I'm trying to fuse the two together and, and kind of hybrid where it's not one or the other, mm-hmm. where neither one is compromised because on the other end of the circle, in some of the circles I I, 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 I maneuver through in, in my reformed world, where it's all just head knowledge mm-hmm. and it never seems to manifest itself no from the heart. Yeah, you know, or, or or it's been around for so long that the beauty of it is lost. Yeah. You know? And and it's just like that's what we do every Sunday. That's what we do, and there's no there's no real deep or true appreciation of it. So I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to fuse it all and bring yeah. it all together, make it um, happen. I, uh, Paul Sylvester Morton, Bishop Paul Sylvester Morton says tradition is frozen success. Uh-huh. Um I think what the Bible says, you know, behold, I should do a new thing and it shall spring forth. It also tells us not to put you know, new wine and old wine skin. And I think the church has attempted to do the right thing by our legacy while ignoring the Bible. <laughs> I'm about to body slam this dog, bro. <laughs> so I think we, I think the church is meant well by trying to honor the tradition. Yeah. Um, but it's not biblical. Yeah. yeah. The Bible tells us to... Yeah. Each generation, we should have something different for each generation from a culture standpoint. Even though the content don't change, cultures yeah. evolve. See, and that's one of the things that, yeah, amen, amen, and amen. Um, in, in, in the Protestant Reformation, like one of the cries of the Reformation was semper reformanda, meaning reforming and always reforming, yeah. you know? Um, I, I was at a Dutch Reformed church because I, my theology is like, it's typically Dutch Reformed or, mm-hmm. or Scottish Presbyterian, whatever. Um, it's, it's almost the same thing. Um, but... But um, I, I was at, the, at a Dutch Reformed church in Paramount, great church, been around for about 100 years, and, and I had a, a, a knack to want to start raising funds for church planners, right? Mm-hmm. I was involved in the church planning world, never thought that I myself would be a church planner. So I started putting on like these spoken word and hip hop, you know, concert fundraisers mm-hmm. like six, seven years ago to raise money, and people were freaking out. Like, yeah. like, what, are you it's doing? like what are you doing? Like, who are the people that are coming? Like, they see like what, what 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 was it the term you used about your nephew at the church right here when you guys were around Rolls Royce Atlantic? Um, that he, Cult, the way he was dressed like cultural. What did you say? Well, urban, just a little urban, low ethnic. Urban yeah. ethnic. Okay. Yeah. So th- in their minds, they're thinking about three, four hundred ethnic urban yeah. blacks and Latinos coming into predominantly white Dutch Reformed church and like yeah. who are they? And I'm like one, it, it's it's Jesus yeah. who was the focus of what we're doing, yeah. and, and it took some time, but there was change, mm-hmm. right? And it was good change. It was yeah. beautiful transformation. And I love them for being open to it and embracing it. But it's not always easy to change. Yeah, you, it's you know? a slap in the face most of the time. I think it takes people who are called to reform. Because yeah. I'm called to be a, for, a reformer, even though I'm not a part of the denominational attachment. No, but that's, um, but that's a different term. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm called to be a reformer, and I've learned in reformation, um, the first approach is a slap in the face. Uh-huh. The second approach makes them reflect and think that what they learned or knew before was wrong, so they've wasted all this yeah. time. Yeah. In Reformation, it has nothing to do with the past and everything to do with the present and the future. Mm-hmm. Like, being a Reformed believer does not dishonor your past. It actually honors your past because we can't go to the next level without having this yeah. level. So yeah. I think our perception of Reformation must change, and we shouldn't get so offended and take it so personal and think we're dishonoring my uncle because yeah. I'm like fourth fourth generation preacher, pastor. Wow. So I'm not dishonoring yeah. none of my legacy because of the way I do church yeah. or the way I do God or the way I do Jesus. So let, let, let's let's talk about the Finney that was raised in Watts, right? You were going to church in Watts as, as a youngster? I was going to church in Compton. I okay, went to in Compton. You, Compton. Were, you were from Watts, going to church in Compton. Yeah, I born in Watts, grew up in Linwood. Okay. So, but I was always in Watts, um, Imperial Courts, in Jordan Downs because of my cousins. Okay. And then my father was smart enough to, when I got to high school, he kind of cut off the attachment uh-huh. because he saw people taking left-hand turns yeah. and he just protected me. Yeah, for sure. It bothered me, but it saved my life. Yeah. So the Finney from back then to the Finney that was wearing gaiters and, 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 yeah. and, that, and that outfit to, to Pastor Finney that posted something on social media this morning. Which was different, and I'll let you share whatever you want to share, like like about that, because uh, I, I'll tell you, I appreciate the transparency, because yeah. you know what, um, George Casanova, 
Mm-hmm. We went back and forth yeah, yeah, yeah. the other day, right? Well, mm-hmm. we got invited to their campaign party night at Chico's. Yeah. So me and my homie, you know, my co-pastor Chris, we went, yeah. and, and the whole crew was there, right? Yeah. And and he looked at George. If you're listening, shout out to you. Uh, praying for you and the crew. Uh, good work. We got, you, we got your back. Man. Get, we got get, your back. Getting rid of that that crusty mattress that that had been there for like two weeks, right? As soon as he saw the post, it was gone a couple hours later. But he said, "I like the way you guys are doing church." Mm-hmm. He goes, "You're doing it different," and I, and I support you guys. Mm-hmm. And when I saw your video this morning, I couldn't help but say, hey "Amen." My brother's doing ministry different. Yeah. Right. So what what happened, or how did the transition get from 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 Gator Finn to to to, to the Finn wearing a T-shirt uh, and bumping hip hop and doing a live video feed so everybody can see what is on his mind? Life happens. Life happens. Um, you know, being a part of certain reformation of denominations, you can think higher of yourself than you are. Yeah. And then when life happens, um, and you're humble, because yeah. there's two type of people in life, humble people or people who are about to be humble. Yeah. Um, so life happened, it humbled me. Um, and people judged me. And no. Had, they judged me. People in the church judged me. Talked you? about me, discarded <laughs> me, told me I wouldn't be nothing. I now I'm not supposed to be here now. Wow. And the thing that was always in me just woke up. Wow. The dude who don't really, excuse my language, give a hell. He woke up. He became more concerned about getting closer to God because the more I got judged, the louder God got because yeah. God wanted to protect me. Yeah. So imagine going through a transgression, being persecuted and judged because of it, wanting to go into depression, wanting to indulge in vices, Yet God and the Holy Spirit gets louder and bolder and bigger and brighter to the point where I was like, who am I serving? Yeah, yeah. Are you my, serving the tradition that, yeah. that you come from and, and, and doing everything to satisfy that? My service is to God and the people benefit and are blessed. I'm not serving the people. Yeah. I'm serving God. Yeah. So I had to kind of get over myself. Because I thought I was something. <laughs> and life humbled me. No. And then I had to, man, you got on yeah. three-piece suit and gators with cufflinks. And you think you're the best, best dressed dude when you got bishops in purple. You thinking you look better than them. I thought I was something. I, I probably was that guy. Yeah. But my perspective and perception was off. Yeah. So life humbled me. And I stopped caring about people even though I called to people. Yeah. And it got me to a place where I understood who I was called to, not who I wanted to be called yeah. to. And, and, and the type of, and I think the context that we're doing ministry to has a lot to do with, with how, how we function as ministry, yeah. right? Because um, we were talking like Paul said, be all things to all people. But uh, am I really going to be able to, to wear a three-piece suit and use words like epistemologically speaking, mm-hmm. and, you, you know, to a group of people that, that are barely even trying yeah. to understand what the, what the basic yeah. concept of the gospel is? And even with, with that scripture, being all things to all people, if we break it down into layman's terms, be yourself yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Don't change up. Yeah. We make the mistake in trying to be chameleons yeah. because we're trying to people please. Mm-hmm. Versus God, please. Instead of being a chameleon, be you to the homeless person, to the gangbanger, to the corporate America member. Yeah. I got to be myself and whoever is called to connect with me, guess what? They're going to receive me. Yeah. And if they can't receive me, that doesn't mean I'm a bad person. That just means somebody else is meant, called, and purpose to be in our life because God is a relational God. We yeah. can't make it without relationships. Yeah. And, and, and what you're saying just reminded me of something that I read yesterday that really ministered to me. Um, where, where Jesus said, if, if you walk into a home and, and they don't receive you or welcome you, shake the dust off your sandals and keep pushing. You know, it's like, okay, like I told you, I, my, my pastor, walk with those that want to be walked with. Mm-hmm. And, and those that don't, bless them and keep pushing. Yeah. You know? And that fact alone saved my life and my sanity. Amen. At, at, in ministry. In ministry. Okay. In ministry. It saved my life because, you know, there are times where I quit eight days a week <laughs> and still would preach on Sunday. But because of the power of God and I had a study habit and I know the Bible, I, could, I got away with it. But yeah. it wasn't until um, I had to accept who I was. I didn't want who, I, who who wants to be a pastor. Yeah. Who wants to know people's interpersonal business? Yeah. Who wants to see stuff and never feel accepted, yeah. never feel properly validated or affirmed? But yet, because we're called to be all things, all people still smile. Bro, you still give grace. Pre- what was it, pre- was it, what yeah. does it say? Um, bless those who despitefully use you. You know there are people out to get you with that are around you. 
for either personal intentions or bad intentions, and yet I gotta be the same person. Yeah. Every yeah. Sunday, mm-hmm. fifty-two straight weeks. Yeah. Sunday, Wednesday, Tuesday, whatever day you have. That's what a hundred and four times you gotta go before God's people mm-hmm. with a grace power. Yeah. And teach principles because right now we you can't get away with the like we talked like we talked about earlier the whole emotional yeah. piece that mm-hmm. stuff ain't people need principles mm-hmm. to live this life you can't just sit up here and slap me in the face with what I can't do what yeah. should I be doing then yeah. so I'm more focused on not talking about sin but talk about purpose mm-hmm. and talking about purpose is talking about being connected to the person who gives the purpose and the closer you get to God the more you realize your moral line and your right and wrong according to the Bible yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, um, I, I, I hear what you're saying. I've been going through through some difficult times uh, this past week. That's why I posted this morning. Like, um, I was. Re- it's funny because I, I was just encouraging people to get into the word. You know, yeah. I had a really rough day a couple of days ago, and um, so I, I go through my devotions. I'm reading like four different parts in the Bible, mm-hmm. and like I go forward in all of them every single morning. You know, so I don't pick like tomorrow I'm going to read this. It's just wherever I'm at, I keep going. Yeah. And it's funny because the very next day. You know, it's like God is speaking to me through my devotions for what I had went through the previous day mm-hmm. and even until today. And it's like, man, reading the word is just like it's a salve to my soul and yeah. it heals. And I was like, so I, I, I posted that this morning, just encouraging people, like get in your word, like not, not the yeah. dust off your Bible and get into it. You, you, know, you know what I'm saying? And, I, and the Bible is dope. Yeah. Like people don't understand how raw and relational the Bible is. There's not nothing that's taking place on this earth. That hasn't been addressed biblically. Yeah, there ain't no f- emotion yeah. that that some human can have encountered and then not be found in the Psalms. Yes, betrayal, vengeance, hurt, fear, anxiety, yeah. concern, like like everything is yeah. there, right? And I think that's what's helped even my ministry presentation. I'm more worried about the Bible than how I preach. Mm-hmm. It's, I've become a pretty good preacher, but I wasn't always a good preacher. Yeah. Um, and that's over time and maturation and practice. Yeah. You get up every Sunday, yeah. you're going to get better at it. <laughs> but the fact that I've never forgot the Bible and that I love to read the Bible and that I'm a scholar, I'll never call myself a theologian. Yeah. Um, because I'm, I, I don't want to be that arrogant. Uh-huh. I don't want my own theology. Okay. So um, I'm a biblical scholar. Okay. And um, I'm okay with that. There was okay. once a time because of all of the Pentecostal traditionalism to where I did not want to be so book smart to mm-hmm. where I wasn't relational. Yeah. We, like you said, you can be around people who know it all but can't present nothing. Yeah, because what, what, what good is it to have all this great information about God in your head, yeah. but it's never practically lived out through the mm-hmm. heart, right? And it doesn't manifest itself in, in practical situations yeah. in life, you know? So that's, that's been good. a big blessing. And, you know, we're a little reckless. I posted T Grizzly this morning. Wake up for our, our for, so for our our listeners who may not be familiar with T Grizzly. Can what, what does the song say? You don't have to use exact words, but what is the meaning behind the song um, or the general message? The, uh, I guess the hashtags it said: Wake up, mm-hmm. pray up, stay up, mm-hmm. um, get up and be about something. Yeah, it had a couple of you know ex- explicitives in it, curse words if you want to call them. Mm-hmm. But it was still a message, even with the what's considered to be vulgar vernacular. Yeah. And the reality is, I'm going to present it not because I'm condoning cursing. The reality is, people curse. Yeah. People go, people go to your church. They curse. No, not my church. Not, I don't know about your church, bro. But well, I know they curse. Cursing, <laughs> I know they curse in my church because I know that I still, I, I still curse sometimes. Pray for me, yeah. please. Yeah. But the reality is, we're a, this is the environment we are. It says to be. In the world and not of it. Yeah. But if I'm going to be in the world and try to transform the world, I must understand where the world is. I can't be so heavenly bound. I'm no earthly good. Yeah. Who are you going to save other than yourself? Yeah. God has allowed you to overcome all of your shot calling days and your big homie days. No, that wasn't me, bro. You got me. You got it twisted. That wasn't me. God has allowed you <laughs> to overcome all that, yeah. not to take you to heaven. Because if that's the case, God would have saved your soul and you would have dropped it. Yeah. He. Is keeping us on this earth to help somebody else. Yeah. But who? What? Yeah. Yo, yo, famous and will be famous hashtag is hood grace. Mm-hmm. But don't nobody want to go to the hood and give them grace. Yeah. Like who wants to pat? Like who wants to pastor a hood church? Yeah. The budget gonna be low. Oh. <laughs> there you go. 
So, you know, like, like we're saying, like, come on, I, people want to be in suburban, affluent yeah. areas pastoring. Don't nobody want to preach in the hood. Yeah. Or people with fixed incomes and they urban ethnic problems and drama. Yeah. But this is where the real work is. Like, I wouldn't, as much as we're probably both capable and able to pastor in what's considered more affluent situations. Yeah. Like the song said, I love the trenches. Yeah. And, and, and it's the truth, bro, because I was having a conversation with somebody the, the other day that I couldn't get them to understand. I couldn't get them to understand um, some of the fat, the sacrifices. Like, say, for instance, and, and that's not saying, oh, I'm this or I'm all that, but yeah. just, I used to be at an affluent church. Yeah. You know? And, and it's and it was 15 minutes away. Yeah. We lived in a really nice home, like mm-hmm. a brand spanking new home. Mm-hmm. Two stories, four bedrooms, three bathrooms, pool, two-car garage, mm-hmm. and the church was right across the street. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, like I, 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 no I, I crossed the street. Yeah. It was comfortable. There was no crime right there. And and it's. I was like, do you understand the sacrifice? It is that there's such a love of God that I was willing to pull my family out of that. On the way, Finney, as, as we were um, looking for homes on, to move over here, we went to look at a house right down the street online, online right? Mm-hmm. And as we're getting ready to go look at the house, this seven-year-old kid gets killed. That was like uh, a little bit over a year ago, yeah. maybe a year and a half ago, mm-hmm. right? So there went that. And we had to leave where we were at to move over here. And, and, and then all of a sudden, one of the homies that's a, a real estate broker calls me and tells me about this place. Mm-hmm. And we come and look at it. And I'm like, we can't afford it. And she said, God will provide, you know? Yeah. Um, I feel safe, the security, the gates, yeah. the cameras, like... That's gonna be the one thing I'm not gonna compromise on. But other than that, I got your back. Yeah. But like, why would why would somebody do that and not make more money? It's the love of Jesus. Yeah. It's drawing people closer to Jesus. There's mega churches that come in like Hillsong. I'm mm-hmm. just gonna I'm just gonna say the yeah. Hillsong and and what's the other one? Rick Warren's church. Um, Saddleback. Saddleback. Yeah. They'll plant churches like in Hollywood and West LA, and New York, but like ain't nobody planting church in Compton, Watts, or Linwood. Mm-hmm. Like in this tri in this tri area. There's, no, to... there's no financial return there's on investment. Not. There's not. That's a like, bad business. There ain't no money. It's a bad in the hood. business yeah. investment. There ain't no money in the hood. So yeah. why would somebody do it? For the love be, of God. Gotta be called. For the love of God and for the love of people. And exactly, you gotta have a call, right? You gotta be called. Because to not just anybody can get on the phone and say. Yo, your homie's from across Atlanta you're tripping over here on my, on my nephew. Yeah. Hey, your homie's from Enhood over here riding my wall. Like, what's up? This is the Lord's house. Yeah. Like, not everybody has a hood Rolodex that, yeah. that somebody can, yeah. can just sit down and talk and to. And that's all God. That, Like I said, that's, yeah. I'm not that guy. That's exactly. all God. Exactly. Like, I'm 6'5". I'm 250. Uh-huh. 55. <laughs> uh, but I'm not that guy. So yeah. it's a grace. And that grace comes with the call. Yeah. But if I didn't accept the grace, it does nothing for the neighborhood I'm called to serve. Yeah. So, yeah, that's 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 pretty dope stuff, bro. Uh, I'm excited for what you're doing here. Um, I'm I'm grateful to to have had a chance to meet you and, and see what you're doing. Let me go through some of the comments that some of our friends are are sharing. The homie Chris Godfordson in um, in Northwest Iowa. He's over in Rock Valley. I was actually at his house um, last week. Dude is he's a he's a savage, bro. I love that dude to death. He um he uh. Um, hosted me, got some people together. He's helping us out and, and getting the word out about our church and what we're doing here uh, to network with. He says, what up? Let me get this up so I can see all the comments. Um, why can't I see all the yeah, comments? Yeah, I can only see some of them. Christina Gonzalez. Christina Gonzalez, yeah. She's she's a faithful servant of our church. Uh, Denise Casares, uh, Joanna Barrio. Uh, these are all friends. Um that are taking time out to say hello. If, if anybody has any questions, any specific questions you, you have for, for Pastor Finn or myself, like, like let us know because we're going to be uh, logging off in a few, in a few minutes. But um, I wanted you guys to get a chance to know who he is. Uh, his church is right here in Linwood. They've been here for how many years have you been here in Linwood? We've been in Linwood now for six years. For six years. Six years. You know? six years. And, and six years in Linwood, but the whole time here in the area. But here in the area, I've been serving um, this area now for... Eight plus seven was eight plus seven. Fifteen. Bro, Fifteen still. years. <laughs> Fifteen years. I was uh, an associate uh, minister and um, a pastor's assistant in Compton off of Long Beach and Elm, and then ended up borderline Compton Linwood, and then transitioned to Linwood. So I've been serving this general area for fifteen years. Yeah. yeah. Before we moved over here, so before I took the call to be on staff at that church in Paramount, 
Uh, we lived on the Watt side of Inwood. I lived over there by Hercules Burgers. Okay. On Bellinger, right yeah. where, where Imperial Curves, right before you get to Alameda. Yeah. Um, and I got a homie now. He's uh, the, the pastor of Hope Central Watts. I'm yeah, I've, I've met him before. We Jose used to, Jose we used to uh, do Starbucks together in Bellflower. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bellflower, right? Bellflower. I lived he, in Bellflower at one point in time. He, he, he did too. Yeah. He did too. Now he's in... Uh, and I was... I, I met him maybe six, seven... It's probably seven, eight years ago yeah. when I met him. We used to always yeah. frequent Starbucks and Bellflower. Yeah, so that's the homie, Jose yeah. Hernandez, whatever. He, he, he has the church. He in the gym, right? In Nicholson Gardens, right? Well, he, he, he go yeah, well, yeah, he was doing events there, but they meet at, at 109th Street Park in Watts. Uh, oh, okay. 109th so they, between, was that Wilmington and Central, Wilmington okay. and Compton? I know when he first planted it, they were in the Nicholson Gardens. Yeah. So. And, and he does stuff all year long. Though, like, he's been hitting the Haciendas, I'm sorry, the Guns Act, the okay. Guns Acts. That's that's the official name, right? Oh, the but on the street, it's the haciendas. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, doing stuff at the haciendas and the Nickersons, yeah. uh, at the Jordan Downs and the Imperial mm-hmm. Courts. He goes around all over, and I got mad respect for him because he's in an area where where people. Now I want to make sure I phrase this correct because I ain't trying to put nobody down for doing some of the work. Yeah. But there's groups of people that will come in and host events, and God bless them, mm-hmm. and then they bounce. Like yeah. They come in, they'll do an outreach, and then they bounce. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if they're really connecting the people that they're outreaching to real to, resources. The, lo- to the local church yeah. and real resources so they can get continuous care mm-hmm. and not just say some profession of faith, eat a free burger. Yeah. And A lot of them, it, unfortunately, you know, do it to make themselves look good and to honor their missionary budget. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are, are trying to transition their outreach to in re- local missionary yeah. work. And uh-huh. that's coming down to the hood, taking the pictures, you know, yeah. and posting it on your timeline. Like, we went to the hood and helped out yeah. the non-advantaged people. <laughs> the under-resourced people, which yeah. we are, but, yeah, you know, I, I want to see people come in long-term. Yeah partner with the existing churches yeah you know what i'm saying like when we were coming to linwood so i'm not from linwood i wasn't yeah. raised in Linwood. i was raised in hp i was raised in hp you know yeah HP. we ain't supposed to be sitting at the table together <laughs> y'all don't like us <laughs> keep it 100 you know i was i was raised in hp and i ran around south central and watched mm-hmm. gang banging all my days you know um but but i i noticed like 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 God, God has a call for this area, mm-hmm. and and there's a lot of churches that are doing good work, including yours. Yeah, I said, what, what if we were to come in and partner with what everybody's already doing, mm-hmm. and kind of serve as a catalyst to bring the churches together, so that we're not just off doing independent work, yeah. but but come together, and network, and mm-hmm. resource, and and be the household of God. I think I think Christianity in Linwood, it's in little pockets, it's isolated, almost to the point to where Linwood. Because people have moved on. Yeah. Um, most of the churches, except for the Hispanic churches, mm-hmm. they're commuter churches. Most of the African American yeah. churches, they're commuting in. Yeah. Um, it may have been grandmother's church or whatever, but they're still going there because there's a legacy or a history there. Yeah. I think Linwood um, needs more more outreach. Seventy thousand um, adults that are able to vote in Linwood. And, and they, what is it like? Four square miles or something like that. Yes, yeah, four square miles. Oh. So seventy thousand people. In Linwood, and you probably have, and I'm going to be nice, maybe 10% of them go to church in Linwood. Maybe, maybe. And the majority of that may be St. Amelia, St. Philanary, Catholic churches. <laughs> yeah. So when you have 50% of your uh, religious belief um, are Catholic, the other are Protestant, and you look at that number, you take the number down to 5,000 people, um, there's a minority or a remnant responsible for the spiritual well being. Of the greater good of the city. Yeah. So um, I understand that. I know that I'm called to galvanize it, network, and partner. Mm-hmm. But because I am a reformist um, and a non traditionalist, yeah. um, you don't get well accepted attempt, by everybody. Attempting to partner with some of the, the good old buddies in the neighborhood, I just, I knew not to waste my time. Yeah. So I just do what I do. But the Lord connects people like us together. Exactly. You know, that exactly. Have to like have Nissan. Nissan yeah. is a. A big little homie in my he he has the corner market on how they do church yeah. at Greater Main Temple has yeah. an awesome work inherited a great legacy and he's even reforming that yeah. situation. I think we're there's a new wave of reformers. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So. So I'm gonna ask you publicly in front of everybody. You know we had a unity service last week last last month yeah. or two months ago, right? Uh-huh. Will the junction consider partnering with us for next year so yeah. we can get. More of the churches involved because yeah, that's Nissan, done. Yeah, Nissan, Nissan's, and I think the date is September 29th. It's mm-hmm. the last 
Sunday, which is the fifth Sunday. A lot of churches on the fifth Sunday they have like different, yeah, you know, different. They're open their calendar yeah. to not doing regular stuff, but um, it would be dope to have the junction go there because, bro, to see black and brown, yeah, and like our church started in Linwood Park, yeah. I, I don't know if you know that. Yeah, I'm aware. Yeah, so we, we did that. We had services in Linwood Park. Oh, so you did? We, yeah, we're okay. familiar. We um in the summer we do our summer closeout service in Linwood Park okay. and do like the back to school thing. So, okay. um, yeah. That's not a problem. See, so that's cool that we're, yeah. that we're connecting now because, the, I mean, if we did it once a year, we had more and more churches coming yeah. together. So that, the, and it's not like, hey, come to my church, don't go to his church. Like, yeah. go to church. Yeah, go to church. Go, go we to don't church. Care where you go. You know, and what I'm I saying? think it's good, especially in Linwood. There's always been this elephant in the room between black and brown mm -hmm. that's never been properly addressed. Uh -huh. And I think it takes believers to maybe bring up that question. Yeah. Like, I play in a basketball league in Linwood. And the uh, organizer of the, our team is Hispanic. Mm -hmm. Known him my whole life. He got pressed by his other Hispanics. Why you got them black people on your team? <laughs> you don't need them to win. And he had to tell him it ain't about winning. It's about these my brothers. Oh, uh, bro, people are weird. These my brothers. So weird, I think we can help, you know, eradicate some of the undercurrent issues that you yeah. probably don't know uh -huh. about because you're new to the city. But I've had to personally yeah. deal with and overcome. Yeah. Um, to the point to where, first of all, it's okay to be brown in Linwood. We yeah. already know that. Yeah. We need to also know it's okay to be black in Linwood. Yeah. yeah. And it's okay to just be from Linwood. Yeah. So, um, I don't have a problem with understanding that's what's needed in this time and this um, dispensation of life. And I'm here to serve. So. Yeah. One one of the things that we that we that we pressed on in our message that day was that outside of the gospel, there is no unity. Yeah. You know, like like outside of the gospel of Christ, there is no unity. Mm -hmm. Like. We wanted people to understand that 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 in the gospel it doesn't matter if you're from Linwood or not or from Watts or from Compton if you're yeah. black if you're brown if you banged if you didn't if you got hit if you if you got hair you yeah. on your head or you don't like like that stuff doesn't matter it's mm -hmm. irrelevant you, you know um, and and we want to be able to, to to start getting that together but I really want to talk to you afterwards off the air because I think two weeks ago we had like like five shootings and seven deaths yeah in, in one week mm -hmm. and, and I reached out to one of the homies that's here. And I said, hey, do you know any of the dudes, shot callers from these neighborhoods that would be willing to sit down and talk? He's like, to the cops? I'm like, no, to me, bro. Like, like yeah. to me, you know? And um, he said, you would do that? I'm like, yeah, but I ain't finna walk in somebody's hood and with a bald head and all these and all these tattoos on my arm. Yeah. And just like, yo, let's talk, you know? I'll get dumped on, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So um, I, I would love to be able... To, to carry that conversation on to see but, who we could talk to. But I think it's about understanding everybody evolves. I've coached Pop Warner and Linwood, mm -hmm. and one of my dearest friends and one of my coaching partners was from CB70. Yeah. CB70 on back of his head. Uh -huh. That means kill black people <laughs> on sight. Yeah. But he's evolved, he's matured, he has children now, both yeah. of our kids, yeah. same age, play against each other and with yeah. each other. And as adults, you can have conversations without having conversations. Yeah. Yeah, I used to be that, but I'm not no more. Okay, yeah. we cool then. Yeah. You know, so I don't want nobody to be walking around scared. I got a couple tattoos. None of them are gang affiliated, but yeah. I don't want nobody to assume any narratives about me. I, I'm bald with a beard, so. Mm -hmm. And I wear jade, so I'm supposed to be a thug. <laughs> but what does your shirt say? It says... Pray, P P cubed, right? P, P cubed, P three, the P three movement. Pray, preach, prophesy. It's a uh, apostolic training movement that we have because um, the more smaller churches just don't have the proper ministry tools and training tools to um, keep ministries simple. Got gotcha. you. Um, and that's that's who I am. I yeah. pray, I preach, I prophesy. I tell you to go home. Yeah. And um, I think we need to get back to a more reduced or minimalized presentation of the gospel. Got you. Too much opinion going on, too much cliche, too much fluff, and not enough biblical-based, God-sent principles to yeah. help change lives. If lives are not being transformed, why are we here? We're here to hang out. We can go to the club and hang out yeah. and have some good beverages. That ain't too holy. Mm -hmm. But if we're here to become closer to God and learn from God and become better people, give me some principles. So yeah. I've become basically a principles, a principle-presenting prophet. Got you. If that makes any sense. Yeah, that's not like a tongue twister, I mean, but Yeah. <laughs> um, well, man, how long have we been on now? We've been on 48 now minutes. for 49 minutes. Yeah, 49. it's been on for a while. Yeah. Well, look, um, I'm, I'm, we're over the time that we normally take. Finn, I'd love to have you back every so often. Just yeah. check in and continue to talk. And, 
and and uh, how how can the people that are listening to us now or watching how can we pray for you and the junction? Um, uh, that I just continue to obey God and the people become more consistent with the move that's going on there. Okay. I think we're learning how to become consistent because I have people who are not church folk, so they don't, okay. just don't understand. So we're teaching people um, to how to how to do church. Okay. Um, but do it the way we do it. So okay. it's. Because people have assumptives about outside church. The, outside the box. Yeah, they have assumptions about traditional church. And if you don't have a real church background and you have these assumptions about church and then you come to our church, well, that ain't what I thought of. No. Yeah. It's intentional. Yeah. This is how we're going to do things. And just becoming consistent, continue to galvanize and build. Um, we're a family-focused church. So just building one family at a time, loving the family, empower a family. God sends another family. So we're in a good flow right now. Just continue to... Um, Basically, build our capacity to be a blessing to the people. Okay. It's all about capacity building right now. Okay. So, if somebody uh, is in the Linwood area, um, they can stop by your church, The Junction, yeah. on Sunday at what time? 1230 at the, the Glennon Club building. It's um, at What's the address there? Um, 3889 Imperial Highway, uh -huh. um, Linwood, California. And if somebody doesn't know where that club is, I could tell you it's right next to Tamaleria yeah. on Imperial. And what's the cross street there? The, and cross street is Imperial and... This is your moment, homie. You're blowing it on the street. I don't, I don't know the cross street. I just know where it's set out from Linwood. Yeah. I don't know street names. It I know only, landmarks. It's it only a couple of blocks away from Emmanuel Temple. Emmanuel like, Temple. Yeah, I see, you know, because he probably got the biggest church in Linwood. Yeah. I, I, when we open our doors, I can see people parking going to this church. <laughs> so that, and that's something that I honestly have to overcome. Yeah. Being in the shadows of a great yeah. ministry. Yeah. Like Nissan got it cracking over there. Yeah. And being called to something and you got a lot less people, but you're doing the same work and your people are blessed, but yeah, you know, not, not everybody's called to have like, yeah. a big church. You yeah. know, like, like I don't, I don't, I mean, we want our church to grow, yeah. not, not for the sake of numbers, but because we're talking about eternal souls. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and if our church, ever, like we want to be a church that plants churches, yeah. you know, and right now we're, we're in that process of, of potentially planting a church, you yeah. know, so, so we don't want to get big and have thousands. Well, I don't thousands either. We have. A, I want to be able to break off and like we, you know plant churches. We have a five year plan to have three locations within a twenty mile radius. Like once we get to that, anywhere near two hundred people, yeah, it's time to push leaders out to, the, yeah. to their next level yeah. and try to duplicate what God is doing through your lenses. Yeah, and that's discipleship, right? Yeah, so discipleship. I don't I don't think I will ever pastor a mega church, but I do think I'll oversee a mega ministry. Yeah. And if anybody wants more information on The Junction, what website can they go to? Um, they can go to thejunction.org. Um, they can follow me on at askfinney.com, Instagram, ask at askfinney.com. I mean, askfinney.com is my personal business okay. website. Askfinney is my handle on IG and okay. Facebook. Okay. Um, they can just hit me up. I'm accessible. I'm normally in, in Linwood the first half of the day, and the second half of the day I'm in Watts. Okay. So cool. that's just how my life flows right now. Now, where's your favorite spot to eat in Linwood? Chico's. Chico's. <laughs> Chico's. And, where's your, and where's your favorite spot to eat in Watts? Watts Coffee House. Okay, good. I I, I go there all the time. Watts what, Coffee House. Deidre? Yeah. Yeah, Deidre. Yeah. yeah, she's dope. Yeah, Watts Coffee House yeah. is the second spot. I, I, like, I go there like once a month, man. I'm there probably twice a month. Okay. I can only do Chico's once a month. You know, <laughs> I, I'm trying to watch my figure. I watch uh, my figure. I can't be wearing these little bitty t-shirts <laughs> and have a Baptist belly, so yeah, I'm yeah. working on it. I hear you. I hear you. Um, I, I like mariscos, bro, and, mm -hmm. and you know, seafood. So yeah. there's like, I think like Linwood is like the mecca. Yeah, they have of, a of bunch of places, mom right? and pop, awesome seafood restaurants yeah. in Linwood. Yeah. Um, th there's a place, not Hawkins, but it's um, the, the Hamlet Shack. The Hamlet Shack. Have you been there? No, I haven't. I've heard of it, though. The Hamlet Shack is um, like half a block away from Hawkins. Yeah. And it's well, there used to be that hot dog place, mm -hmm. right? Arts. With, with, it used to be arts. Ar yeah, it used to be arts. arts. Yeah. So now they turn to the Hamlet Shack, mm -hmm. which it's supposed to be like, um, like healthy fast food. Yeah. It's pretty good, bro. Yeah. I'm it, it's, try it's, it. it's pretty good. Check it out. It's pretty, it's pretty yeah. good. It just sucks that there's not too much seating and it's really it's, it's hella windy right there. You know? Yeah. I'm sorry, I said hella. Forgive me. Um, yeah. He, he, yeah. We forgive him. <laughs> Please don't come for him for saying hella. If you yeah. got a problem with his hella, yeah, you don't need to stop me. Yeah. No, my people know me. They know me. <laughs> look, Finn, hey, it was great having a chance to hang out and talk with you. I, I pray we'll be doing this again. Yes, we will. I and love you, see, man. See how we can share you. What I want to do is give you a P3 Movement shirt and towel. Oh, dope, man. Um, Thank you. 
Yeah, man. Um, just you know, we're just trying to do what God has told us to do. Amen. And um, just honor Him and serving God's people. Like Thank I you said. very much. The, and, and just so you know, like this will be sported at Planet Fitness, where I go and get my. Workout hey, take it. Out. I work out. I got a cut off P three shirt with my name on the back. All right, all right. And yeah, I work out in it, so it's it's usable. It's just trying to promote, push, get the brand out because. I'm an understanding that what God has called us to do yeah. is bigger than our four walls. Amen. Amen. And this is just the P3 movement, just my personal God given can do it to have church outside of the walls. Amen. So, Amen. so thank you, Pastor Finn. Thank Appreciate you for you. having me. Thank you for thinking of me. Man. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we'll be praying for the junction. Yeah. Uh, and y'all stay tuned for what God will be doing through our churches in the future. Amen. 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 Peace. That was fun. That was dope. <laughs> now, uh, now, um, now I'm going to be able to see all the comments. For some reason, I couldn't see them. Yeah, well, I don't even know if I was able to share it to mine properly.